Welcome back to the Jin's Treasure. Today I changed the angle of the video and that was intentional for the purpose of understanding a part of what we're doing today. If you can see this copper spool way at the end here and I'm pulling just to show you a measurement. I'm pulling and this wire has come all the way across my chest with one full arm's length. And this is the 20 gauge wire. So that is the reason why the change of angle. Now, let me show you what I'm gonna, what we're gonna be, what I'm gonna be showing you. Let me show you what I'm gonna show you. This is um, a jet stone, which is a black stone and um, one of my better wraps, I would say. And what I wanna show you, instead of showing you the entire thing because it's that would be a pretty overwhelmingly long hours long video um, instead I want to show you uh, if we could get the focus on it um, come on all right there we go much better as you can see what I was pointing out is each individual coil here so there's a coil there's a coil, there's a coil. But you notice there's an intricate design in here. And what it is, is there's actually um, some coilception going on. It's a coil wrapped around a coil wrapped around a coil. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I wanna show you today. What we're gonna do is start with our 18 gauge wire, copper wire and pull, this is, uh, the amount of length that we're gonna use is gonna be dependent. I'll show you, for example, for about this size of a stone. And the idea is that this 18 gauge is, if you've seen my other videos, you know that normally I use the 24 gauge and the 20 gauge wire. Um, and the, this would be, the length of this wire would be identical to the length of the 20 gauge wire in those other videos. More or less, the stone is slightly bigger than most of the stones in the other video. So the idea is that we want the length to be able to, uh, here, let me show the camera. So we want the length to be able to cover the entire length of this stone, the, the perimeter of it. And what I like to do, I always overestimate the amount of wire that I um, that I use just in case I accidentally underestimate because I had already overestimated that way it will compensate for some of the underestimations worst case scenario now for the 20 gauge wire that's the next one that's what we're gonna do the arms length and then all the way across the chest so we're gonna pull that um, amount of length and then clip it and then just to get an idea of the, the length of this one I would say uh, maybe to your uh, elbow about it's also for this size and then for the 24 gauge wire um, actually, I won't draw from that spool because I have some right here. Um, somebody had gifted me some wire, which is great. I'm gonna put it to use. So for this, I'll just go ahead and do like a fold two arms lengths um, going across the chest. Um, you don't have, if you're uncomfortable with that amount of length, because that's a lot. It gets a lot and it gets hairy when there's a lot. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, but that's what I'm shooting for. The thing is, it's still not gonna be enough to fully cover what we're gonna go for. So we will eventually have to pull another one of these lengths, but uh, just to get it started, let me show you. So we take, uh, we'll take our, our 20 gauge wire. And what I do is I bend and coil around my fingers like this, right? So we coil on one side and then coil on the other side 
we leave a little bit of um, room in the middle, right? So we have two coils on each end with um, some length in the middle. And then we'll do the same thing with our 24 gauge wire. And the intention behind this is to just kind of eat up the space so you don't have a very long wire that's kind of like snake tailing and whiplashing around as you do your work. It like shortens the length of the wire, uh, which is really helpful when you're trying to do a wrap like this. So as you can see, I have coils on both ends and then a little bit of length in the middle to work with. I'll probably want more length than that, so I'll un unravel a little bit of the coil. And as I work, I'll unravel more and more. So basically what we're doing is we're crossing the wires now, um, we'll X cross, and then from there we pinch down in the middle and begin to coil our 24 gauge wire, which is our skinnier wire. We're gonna, we're gonna start coiling that around our 20 gauge wire. And this is what it looks like. It's very simple, but if you follow the uh, instructions, because it looks, it looks complicated initially, but then once you get situated and you're able to go, this is it. Everything else, it's all the prep work to get to the point where now we can just go. And you can do this while you're watching TV or, uh, you know, you don't even have to give it your full attention when you get comfortable and skilled enough to go at a pace and um, you can keep your eyes off it. Um, it's a, it's more of a, uh, what do they call those? Not tedious tasks, but like a mindless and time consuming. There's a word for that that I'm forgetting right now. That's fine. So yeah, you just keep on coiling and coiling. And I don't know if I'm gonna wanna spend the entire video just coiling this in front of you and trying to be clever with coming up with some dialogue to entertain you as I go along. What I might do is just, uh, instead, I'll just get this started and then I'll show you if you could imagine I've coiled all of this, all the length, and uh, this is nice and neat. And then I'll just show you the next step, what it would be is taking that 18 gauge wire and then coiling the coiled portion of the 20 gauge wire and then there you have it. You see what I'm going, what it's uh, turning into. Here, I'll give you a few more coils. There you have it. There's, those are the identical coils to uh, what we have here on the side. And those are great. That's a great little technique for um, bigger stones if you want to get fancy. Okay, well, that's my video. Um, I guess if there's any big takeaway that I would hope that you got out of watching my tutorial today, it would be the emphasis on the coiling uh, or like wrapping around your fingers to get this all bunched up. Um, that way it kind of stays nice and organized, as you can see. It's a lot easier for me to be able to go at a fast pace and just kind of propel myself. Also, one thing too that I want to show you um, is that, I lost the focus. There we go. You can see that my coils are not perfect. There's some um, areas where they could be uh, tightened up a little bit and I'm not even worried about that. In fact, I would almost prefer to have some of those. As you continue to coil your coiled portion around your thicker 18 gauge wire, the tighter the coils are around here, um, the higher potential that the wire could actually snap because it needs some of that give in order to uh, compensate for right now it's it's just a straight wire but as it curls it's gonna displace the coils that are wrapped around there 
and they're gonna need somewhere to go. So it's actually better to have some uh, not so tight coils to be wrapping as I'm doing right now. So it's almost like there's a bit of an intention to leaving some gaps as I wrap around and not concern so much with making it nice and tight because that's, uh, it looks good for a different style. So one more quick thing I wanna show you guys before we finish and wrap up this video, pun intended. Um, you notice that my technique for right here, I like it because I have a lot of room to really expand and go, like if I go slow, just slow enough, I can really, um, ha I have a lot of control with how far out I am. I have a lot of control over perfecting the coils. Once you get a good amount of length that's been coiled, I wanna show you another quick little technique. It's just a little zig and zag bend in the, in the coil. And what it does is it creates it to be a crank. So now I have a new technique where I'm just spinning this around. I apologize, it's getting caught on my sleeve here. But I just wanted to demonstrate now so you can see do, I'm going a lot faster and with a lot of ease. And you can, you can use this, this technique whether the coil is going in one direction or the other. It works uh, either way. I suppose uh, if you had a choice, if you could set it, if you could set the coil to be wrapping in such a way that you're able to crank forward, my personal opinion is that it goes um, even easier with the forward motion, but you can back it up kind of like a, a fish reeling in on a fish hook with a fishing rod. And then once you get out to um, a far enough length, you'll notice it kind of gets a little bit more difficult. So what you do is bend another angle. I did that off camera, I apologize. But basically, it was bent over here and then I bent two new angles and now I can keep going. And that's all I wanted to show you for today's video, so thank you.